matter what you drive or where you drive. When you need shocks, you never have to wait for a sale. At AutoZone, Duralast gas shocks are just $10.94 every day. If you've been waiting for a sale on brakes, just remember this. At AutoZone, our Duralast brakes are just $10.99 every day, so you never have to wait for a sale. The farmers of farmland have some new ideas about farming. Because the people of America have some new ideas about eating. And the food you want is the food we produce. Food that's leaner, lower in salt, healthier. From the farmers who own farmland. Better farming, better food. Hi, I'm David Strassman. And I'm Chuck Wood. And we're here to find out why more and more people are driving Chevy trucks. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, what kind of truck do you drive? A Ford. Oh, man. Didn't you know that Chevy has more power than Ford? No. He didn't know. And that Chevy has more payload and a bigger cab than Ford. That you didn't know that buzzhead. Chuck. Get 500 back on a full-size Chevy at your Mid-America Chevy Geo dealers. I can't believe I'm talking to a dummy. Now you know how I feel. Good evening and welcome to the St. Louis 11 News Update. We'll return to Blues Hockey in just a moment. But first, here's a look at some of the top news stories we are following for you. Saying no more business as usual, defying President Bush today vetoed the stopgap spending bill that would reopen the federal government. Today, the veto came as federal agencies, parks, and tourist sites like the Gateway Arch closed because of a lack of funding. Arch officials say 170 employees were told to stay home until a budget deal is worked out. This is only the second time in his 25-year history that the arch was shut down. In St. Louis, the jury has begun deliberations in the trial of Jerry Lee Little. Little is charged with strangling four women between 1985 and 1987, including the rape and murder of Sister Patricia Ann Kelly. Little reportedly confessed to Sister Kelly's murder, but Little's sister testified yesterday she was with her brother that day. In a videotape confession to police played earlier in the trial, Jerry Little said he saw Sister Kelly at her office that fateful day and decided to rob her. At this hour, they're counting the votes in today's Louisiana Open primary. Former Ku Klux Klan leader David Duke is hoping to unseat three-term Democratic incumbent Senator J. Bennett Johnston. The Louisiana Secretary of State predicts a near-record turnout of about 75 percent. Both Johnston and Duke, a Republican running without party backing, predict a primary victory. Duke is a former Grand Wizard of the Knights of Ku Klux Klan, who has also had ties to neo-Nazi organizations. After a five-month launch drought, NASA is back in space again. The shuttle Discovery, with two Missourians among the five-person crew, blasted off from Cape Canaveral this morning. The astronauts ejected an 800-pound science probe called Ulysses to study the polar regions of the sun. Discovery crew will spend the rest of the four-day mission conducting onboard experiments before landing Wednesday at Edwards Air Force Base in California. We will have full details on those stories coming up on St. Louis 11 News right after the hockey game. We will also have a report on asthma and important news for doctors concerning the importance of getting exercise. And we will tell you about a new type of social service professional who is offering help to senior citizens. Plus, we will take a look at a new movie called Miller's Crossing. But joining us now, Bob Ramsey. And may I be the first to uh, welcome you both uh, on the air, officially to Channel 11. It's, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun working with you. You it's too, Channel thanks. Movie. It's good to be here. And we got a good night tonight for sports with hockey, first of all. Welcome to the Bud Sports Break. In just a minute, we'll take you back to the arena where the Blues lead the Blackhawks 2-1 to one after one period. And John Kelly and Ken Wilson will have highlights from the opening period for you. But first... Let's go to the college gridiron, and people are up in arms all over the state. A controversial and gut-wrenching finish in Columbia saw the Missouri Tigers fall just short in their quest of upsets over two straight-ranked opponents. For the highlights, let's go back up I-70 to Faro Field for the highlights as Mizzou takes on number 13, Colorado. As we take a look, I think maybe some buffalo burger meat right there. I think that guy is going to be lucky to get out of uh, Missouri on this day. First quarter, Kent Kiefer will go long and find in the end zone Victor Bailey, the 20-yard touchdown. That put Missouri up 7 to nothing. Still in the first quarter, we'll move it along. Eric Vanamy will go 29 yards. Watch this play. This guy is a terrific football player. He takes the pitch, 
cuts it up the right side, gets the block. He will go all the way into the end zone. That ties the game 7-7, seven to seven. still in the first quarter. Kiefer will drop and throw Missouri through all day long. He finds Damon Mays. What a catch. 49 yards for the reception. Missouri on top, 14-7. to seven. As quarterback Darian Hagan watches from the sidelines, he has an injured shoulder. Mike Pritchard will come back. He was going to want to go long again. Watch this on the reverse. A trick play will take him in 68 yards. Let's go to the scoreboard because the key was to the end of the game, 33-31. How did it get that way? First, let me take a look and show you this thing right here. We can get a shot of this. I just got this on the fax machine from the University of Missouri. Let me line that up for you right there. This is the play-by-play -play sheet. What you're going to see there, the last five plays, first and goal from the three, pass incomplete, second and goal from the three, pass incomplete, third and goal, no gain, fourth and goal, pass incomplete, game over, no. They got another play, fifth and goal, they scored the touchdown, Missouri loses. We're going to tell you more about that in the second intermission and then, of course, in the sportscast uh, after the hockey game. Now, let's take you back to the arena, standing by live, John Kelly and Ken Wilson. Nice first period, fellas. No question about it. The Blues did play well, uh, Bob, and I think that Brian Sutter has to be happy, John. Well, anytime you come out of a period with a two-to-one lead, they outshot the Hawks 19-to-7. Early in the period, the Blues had a lot of three-on-twos. The Hawks tightened up, and they better tighten up, or the Blues could blow them out. Let's take a quick look at the summary of things. The Blues scored first Courtnall from Brindamore and Featherstone, then Jeff Brown from Courtnall and Paul Cavallini with a two-man advantage. Wayne Presley scored from. Brown at 17.58. The Blues out shooting Chicago 19.7. The period summary brought to you by our friends at your Midwest GMC truck dealers. Bellman, Bomberito, and Brocklin GMC. Bob, back to you. All right, thanks, gentlemen. More college football scores and highlights coming up on the Bush Sports Break after the second period. I'll see you then.